Well, we're going live to Perth where Independent Senator Nick Xenophon is holding a media conference with the Transport Workers Union on pay and work conditions at Qantas. Now a disgrace. They're an iconic company that employed permanent staff, uh, people uh, that worked for Qantas, had pride in their employment with Qantas. Now they are ashamed to work for Qantas for the way they treat their people. You know, it is the gateway to the tourism industry of Australia is the, is the airports. Um, you know, the tourist in industry is an $81 billion industry in Australia. Um, you know, we demand that Qantas treat their people with the respect that they should. Um, and, you know, not taken for granted, not set up bodgy companies that all these companies do is drive down rates, turn people into working poor and, um, you know, and Alan Joyce here today will get a pat on the back for so-called turning this company around. Three years ago they said they were in a decline, that they, they would be lucky to keep the doors open. You know, we see, see today where they've made a one billion dollar profit. You know, they've made a one billion dollar profit on the backs of their workers. That's what they've done. Their workers, who are they driving down to the work and poor of Australia? And we demand that their board today stand up and say, no, Alan Joyce is not going to walk away with $12 million. Alan Joyce is going to be held accountable. And they should throw him out. That's what they should do for what he's doing to the workers of the aviation industry. And look, it's best, I think, that we hear directly from a worker in the aviation industry. We've got some here today, proud workers who are struggling to pay bills. And this company, we should be angry. The people of Australia should be angry for what Qantas are doing to the workers of this country. So I'll hand you over to someone who will tell you straight from their mouth of what's going on and how they are treated as Billy McGlue. Thanks, Bill. OK, Tim, thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Billy McGlue and I'm a part-time worker for Qantas Ground Services in Perth. Uh, over the past two years there's been a gradual reduction in hours and it has been by stealth. They introduce uh, rosters uh, twice a year and with every roster change there's been a reduction in hours. Uh, they've also introduced four hour shifts starting at four o'clock in the morning and working to eight o'clock at night or eight o'clock in the morning now that is ridiculous we have sometimes two weeks of four-hour shifts so people cannot afford to uh, pay their bills and keep their uh, family afloat with wages like that and as tim said basically the Average wage at QGS is around about approximately $570, which is $80 below the average wage. We are sick and tired of uh, degradation of uh, standards of living. Uh, Qantas QGS is trying to make our, uh, the Qantas workforce into a third world workforce. We are living in Australia. Uh, Australia is one, one of the top ten countries in the economic countries in the world, so stop it, Alan Joyce. Hello, my name's uh, Barry Lynch. I've worked for QGS for about two years. Uh, like Billy said, the roster is uh, like you get four hour shifts, but sometimes it can go from day to night, nights to days. So there's, I know it's a part-time job, they're saying, but there's no way you can get another job with that roster. Also, like the hourly rate of $21 an hour is just, you know, disgraceful, really. Uh, and also, a lot of the times where they do mess up your wages, you've got to wait three, four months for them to rectify it. So basically, they're holding on to your money, which, you know, you, you can't afford to let them do it anyway. So... Uh, What do you mean? So um, the, the, the rosters that you're working with, part time rosters, and the $21 an hour. Yeah. How does that compare to what you used to get? Is that a change? Used to get from what? So is it a declining. It's a decline, it's a decline in hours, yeah. And also, we've got a new roster coming in two weeks' time, which is uh, a drop of two hours again. So, I mean, like, sometimes blokes are bringing home 900 bucks a fortnight, you know. And, you just can't live on that, you know. It's, it's a disgrace, really. But 
you know, like uh, Tim said, Alan Joyce should be ashamed of himself for what he's doing. So, that's it. Thanks. Joyce, take Um... Uh, I'm here for uh, because I bought the minimum number of shares last year in Qantas I could attend the AGM. I've been involved in, instigated a number of inquiries into Qantas. Uh, there's a, some basic issues here of corporate accountability. And going to what the TWU members have said, it's not just TWU, it's the flight attendants, it's the engineers, it's the pilots uh, who really have had their working conditions degraded as a result of uh, Alan Joyce crying wolf. Um, if you put this in perspective, he said that Qantas International was in quote terminal decline uh, four years ago when in fact it now seems to have bounced back. There seems to be a miraculous, seemingly miraculous three and a half billion turnaround with Qantas's fortunes in the last 12 months. I would urge the media to forensically look at Qantas's books uh, because it seems that for all those, uh, all those who are lauding Alan Joyce to say that he's responsible for getting Qantas out of a seeming nosedive, it seems the same job could have been done by Otto, the automatic pilot, in flying high. And the reason I say that is that you have a situation where if you take uh, the extraordinary f uh, depreciation expenses from last year, uh, that's saved hundreds of millions of dollars, about a billion dollars difference. If you look uh, at the issue of fuel savings, it's half a billion dollars, and the carbon tax, if it wasn't for those three things, then Qantas would have reported a loss. So why is Alan Joyce getting $12 million? The other thing that needs to be said in terms of corporate accountability uh, is that Jetstar Asia has been a black hole for the Qantas group, but we just don't know how much money has been lost. They say $22 million uh, in respect of their aborted takeoff of Jetstar Hong Kong. We just don't know how much Jetstar Pacific, which is based in Vietnam, Jetstar Asia based in Singapore, and Jetstar Japan have cost the group. Uh, we just want some transparency and that's important for every uh, shareholder in terms of corporate governance. And again, uh, Qantas will not tell us what they discussed at their confidential briefing to big end-of-town investors, whereas a lot of mum and dad investors have lost their shirts, and that's why I'll be pushing for some changes to corporate governance rules in this country. Just going to what the TWU was saying, though, if it wasn't for depreciation and the right downs yes. and the falling oil prices, yes. Qantas would have made a loss. So Where's the room to improve conditions for workers if that's the case? Well, the issue is, is this. The big issue has been Qantas in Asia. We just don't know how much of a drain it has been on the Qantas group. So to say that Qantas International is to blame, uh, several years ago there was in terminal de decline dragging down the entire group, look at the accounts. There is, no, there is no requirement for transparency in current corporate accounting rules. I suggest that if we saw forensically what Jetstar in Vietnam, in Singapore, uh, in Japan and the aborted takeoff in Hong Kong, that it has been the biggest drain on the Qantas group. They've overstretched themselves, they've made a bad call, and Alan Joyce is behind that. And when you consider in terms of remuneration, Alan Joyce is due to pocket $12 million this year. When you look at his counterpart at Singapore Airlines, which has been immeasurably more profitable, uh, they are getting something like a third of what Alan Joyce's remuneration will be. There's something seriously wrong here with corporate governance and accountability. Senator Nick Xenophon there with pay and conditions at Qantas.